That was a mess. That has to be one of the sloppiest debates I've ever seen. It wasn't even a debate, it was more like an argument. Basically the whole debate should have been, oh yes you did, oh no I didn't, oh yes you did, oh no I didn't. It was ridiculous. And I want to point out some of the reasons why and what could have been done to avoid it. First of all, I need to point fingers right at where they deserve to be pointed. Anderson Cooper. What a horrible, horrible job as moderator. It was clear he wanted a fight right from the beginning. And then he starts getting upset when things get out of control and people won't answer his questions. It was all in the way he asked the questions. Let's take a look at some of the examples of him asking these questions and why they're not good questions. I'll direct that to uh, Congresswoman Bachman. You've been very critical of Herman Cain's 999 plan, which calls for a 9% sales tax, a 9% income tax, a 9% corporate tax. In fact, you said it would destroy the economy. Why? Senator Santorum, <laughs> will his plan raise taxes? Uh, Congressman Paul, you called his plan dangerous today. Governor Romney, uh, you have your own 59-point plan. In the last debate, Mr. Cain suggested it was too complicated. Is simpler better? Now, notice in the examples, everything is, Perry said that about you. Romney said that about you. Bachman said that about you. He's looking to pick a fight. And guess what? He got one. A lot of them. Not terribly good. Real quick, it didn't take too long until everybody in the room was talking like this. They were all talking like this. Does this sound good? Is this the way you want to hear someone talk to you for an hour and a half? I don't. I don't like being yelled at. I don't like having fingers pointed in my face. It's not good. Now, I'm going to show a clip. Now, here's somebody who's trying to gain control back of this debate. Newt Gingrich kept his head, watched his answer. You have said in recent days that, that Mr. Cain's 999 plan would be a harder sell than he lets on. How so? Well, he just watched it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now, there, look, there, there, there are, first of all, I think that Herman Cain deserves a lot of credit. He's had the courage to go out and take a specific, very big idea at the right level. You, you like and and he, has us, he has us at least talking about something that matters, as opposed to the junk that all too often is masquerading as politics in this country. So I think that's... Now, important. the next clip I want to point out is Bachman. She's really not conducting herself well in a debate. Everything sounds like a commercial. Let's watch this. Let's watch this little clip. Just a few seconds. So we need to repeal Obamacare, repeal the Jobs and Housing Destruction Act known as Dodd-Frank. Oh, President Obama's plan has been a plan for destruction of this economy just, and failure. Thank you. I plan to change that with real jobs right now at michellebachman.com. Notice at the about... end, www.bachman.com. Uh, okay, it's a commercial. It's stuck in there. Yeah. Now, she was probably responding to the fact that Cain had mentioned his website earlier, but Cain did it in a context that made sense. Let's take a look at the way Cain brought up his website. The thing that I would encourage people to do before they engage in this knee-jerk reaction is read our analysis. It is available at HermanCain.com. It was performed by Fiscal Associates. And Notice he's telling you to go to his website to look something up. He's bringing up his website in context that makes sense. As we compare that to what Michelle did, which is she at the end went, here's my website address. It's a debate, not a commercial. Now, my last couple critiques, we really didn't say anything too positive about Ron Paul, but this time I'm going to. Let's take a look at Paul's first question. Now remember, at this point, Perry and Romney have gone at it. Both of them have gone after Kane. Bachman is trying to stuff her way in there. Even Newt Gingrich is sitting there arguing with people. Now let's look at the way Paul answers this question. 
because I liked it. Congressman Paul, you called his plan dangerous today. Uh, oh, it is because it raises revenues, and the the worst part about it is it's regressive. A lot of people have, aren't paying any taxes, and I like that. I don't think that we should even things up by raising taxes. So it is a regressive tax. So it's very, very dangerous in that thing, and it will raise more revenues. But. The gentleman asked the question, he didn't even ask what we're talking about. He asked the question, what are you going to replace the income tax with? And I say nothing. That's what we should replace it with. But I do want to make a point that spending is a tax. As soon as the government spends money, eventually it's a tax. Sometimes we put a direct tax on the people, sometimes we borrow the money, and sometimes we print the money. And then when prices go up, like today, the, the, the uh, wholesale price index went up 7% rate. And if you look at the free market, the prices are going up 9 and 10%. So that is the tax. So spending is the tax. That is the reason I offered the program to cut $1 trillion. Notice he's not attacking market. anyone. He's not attacking anyone. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that really what you want to see out of a president? When the president is sitting down with the prime minister of Russia, don't you kind of hope? That he won't be attacking them? <laughs> yeah, me too. This was really good. This was the way it should be. And when everyone's losing their head, that's the key to winning a debate. The people who are staying away from the personal attacks are actually looking better. In this next clip, watch the reaction from the crowd when Perry makes a personal attack against Romney. This was the telltale sign of why this was a mess and this is not the way to do a debate. Watch this. But they're coming here because there is a magnet and the magnet is called jobs. And those people that hire illegals ought to be penalized. And Mitt, you lose all of your standing from my perspective because you hired illegals in your home and you knew for it, about it for a year. And the idea that you stand here before us and talk about that you're strong on immigration is on its face the height of hypocrisy. <laughs> Governor Romney? Rick, um, and it gets worse. Watch the, I don't, watch it and he hit going. the nail on he the head a while ago. He said there was a magnet of people that will hire illegals, and you are number one on that list, sir. <laughs> and people need to understand that. You're one of the problems, Mitt. I think we've been down that road. Yeah, I think I think we've been, been down, down that, that road, road sufficiently. It sounds like the audience gotta, agrees with me. We've all he did with the personal attacks was make himself look petty and mean. Anyone want to vote for a president who's petty and mean? I don't. I don't think anyone else does either. But that's the way he ends up looking. Plus, he gives Romney a chance to put him in his place and look like the good guy. He's shooting himself in the foot with this thing that obviously some speech coach told him he needs to focus on. You know, there was a mistake made four years ago by this guy. He parked in the wrong parking space or something and we got to attack it. No, you don't. You're there to tell people what you will do. And that's what you have to do. If it had been me, when Anderson Cooper had asked one of those questions, Miss Buckman said this about you, Cliff. Well, could be true. But I'm not too worried about what other people are saying about me. I'm more worried about what I plan to do as president. And what I plan to do as president is I have a plan that I've laid out to get us working, to get us harnessing our energy. The energy is right here under the ground. Isn't that a better answer than, ah, that Michelle Bachman, she's terrible. Oh, what? Don't do it. Just don't do it. We can learn so much about what not to do from watching this mess. Now you can see you don't always have to be in a fight. It doesn't have to be a battle all the time. This kept getting worse and worse and worse. CNN, you did a lousy job. And I don't know if you told Anderson Cooper to do that, or he just decided he was going to try to make every Republican look bad, or he just is not a good moderator. It doesn't matter. It was a mess. CNN should almost apologize for the way they ran this debate. Watch this clip. This is Anderson Cooper's own negligence in action. 
Watch the speech fall apart. He can't even get anyone to answer him a question. Then let me ask the question, Governor Perry. Governor Perry, the 14th Amendment allows any, anybody, a child of illegal immigrants who's born here, is automatically an American citizen. Should that change? Well, let me address uh, Herman's issue that Actually, I'd rather, just, uh, rather you talked about. I'd rather you ask and the question, I, answer that I, I question. I understand that. You get to ask the questions, and I get to answer like I want to. But, <laughs> and Herman, Herman... See what I mean? See what I mean? He's lost control. But that's what happens when you moderate a debate like this. When you moderate a debate for no other reason than to get people into an argument for ratings or whatever the agenda is, that's the result. Ugh. It doesn't feel good for the voters. It doesn't even look good for CNN. And they've been talking about it ever since. And there was no winner of this debate. Just losers. Everyone came out of this debate looking worse than when they came in. That's not good. I would say probably the best of the bunch, if there was anyone who at least maintained their dignity, it would have been Ron Paul. And mainly because he just refused to fight. People were getting into fights, he just refused to fight. But Ronnie and Perry, they were like two pit bulls, just digging at each other. And Kane was almost encouraging them to attack him. I don't know why. I don't know why he wanted to get in this three-way mess. But this is... Definitely the way not to debate. If you want to see not to debate, watch this debate. Every single candidate needs to go back to the drawing board, look at these tapes, look at my critiques of these tapes, and go, hey, Cliff's right. We need to get back to focusing on what's going to fix things and get away from attacking each other. I don't know. I really feel CNN owes us an apology. I feel that Anderson Cooper owes us an apology. And to be honest with you, well, all the Republican candidates too. That was a mess. That was a mess. And I'm sorry for anyone who had to watch it. I know I kind of felt like I wasted an hour and a half of my life. It just wasn't good. So hopefully the next debate will be better run and the candidates will be a little better prepared to not be tearing at each other's throats. I know a little serious for me compared to the way I usually am, but this one just... Uh. Till next time, I'm Cliff Suttle. I'll see you later.